I'm Arno. Uh, I work for a company called Slide, and uh, we are building a, a note application really designed for Teams. I encourage you you try it. Um, today I'm going to talk about GraphQL subscriptions, but in a very niche and uh, uh, specific way uh, where they really shine. Uh, I'm talking about Webhook APIs. So quickly, uh, I assume many people know about Webhook APIs, but basically they are a way for the service to notify uh, uh, a third party uh, application or client about a specific event uh, with an associated payload. And uh, it's usually done over HTTPS as uh, post messages. So uh, let's have a look at the, a few real life examples, uh, good ones. Uh, let's start with Stripe. Uh, can you see my mouse? No, you can't. Uh, okay. Uh, as you can see here, um, it's an event related to an amount being received, and uh, the payload is so huge I couldn't fit it into the, the presentation. Uh, and you can quickly see that it's probably overfetching and probably sending too much data to cover just to cover all the possible uh, needs of the client uh, that receive it. Uh, let's look at Slack. Slack. Uh, Slack is very well documented as well, uh, but they, they have a different approach. They send uh, a lot less data, and then it's up to you to um, uh, fetch extra data if you need to. Um, really good API as well. Um, then you can have a look at the Dropbox. Um, the payloads are a little bit less... Uh, well, the documentation is not as good and a little bit confusing, but maybe it's because I don't know uh, the domain as well. Um, but as you can see, there are like three dots, so you never really know what, what to expect. Another example is uh, GitHub. Um, very good API as well. Uh, but one thing that bothered me is that um, if you can read the types, they're really tiny here, but um, they are either strings or objects. And it's, it's, it's a little bit hard to, uh, to know what to expect. Um, it's about like Webhook APIs are a box of chocolate. You really know what to expect. Um, and I think most of the issues or like the, 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 the things people have had to work really hard on, like documentation, uh, tailoring the, the payloads to fit the, the needs of the clients, uh, having a proper format for it, and, and like being able to add fields and everything. That's where GraphQL really shines. Like th these are the issues that uh, it solved on regular APIs, but with webhooks, it's it's even better. So how would you use GraphQL for um, for this kind of webhooks? GraphQL subscriptions um, and uh, Probably uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that okay, but uh, like it's based on WebSockets, right? Uh, you, that's uh, the way it should be, and you don't want to have many connections open, and you just want to have HTTP, right? But the thing is, and as it was suggested by uh, uh, Lee Byron, uh, I think that was a year ago, or when the GraphQL subscription were introduced, um, it was very clear but it was uh, not well heard, uh, that the transport layer is very, um, it's something, it, uh, as a side effect, it's not, uh, GraphQL is independent of the transport layer. And posting to a webhook was actually really like suggested. Um, and as you can see on this uh, graph that I really uh, captured from the talk, the green uh, boxes that are the IO transport layer are really well separated from the rest. The thing is, when we wanted to uh, design our public API, we couldn't find any, uh, any information or examples of such uh, implementation. So we had to build our own. And uh, we made decision, we made decision um, that you might argue against, but uh, basically, uh, we put GraphQL into GraphQL. That's a bit weird. Um, to create, to subscribe to um, uh, an event, you mutate, you send your query and variables, and to not subscribe, you uh, just send the subscription ID uh, and you will stop receiving uh, um, events. Uh, it, it will look like it, so it, it will look like this, so you will have a mutation which embeds uh, the query for um, the, um, uh, for the subscription, 
which is uh, stringified, uh, can be stringified, and then you've got your variables. Um, why did we do that? It's basically to work in the same way the WebSocket implementation does. Um, this is uh, weird because we're using HTTP and GraphQL as a transport layer for more GraphQL, but um, in the end it does make sense. But uh, if you want to argue that, I'll be outside, and uh, that, that's a, uh, a good point. Uh, we could really, like, we could easily convert that into a REST endpoint if it's easier for you. What's important is that the payload you expect and the event you register to is, will be documented and tailored to your will because it's GraphQL in the end. So the, the queries, it's what's important. Um, we made the deci decision to not force the clients into uh, uh, say, setting up a GraphQL server. We'll just push payloads on the sing single endpoints with uh, the subscription ID, um, a token, so you can verify that it's, uh, it comes from us and not some dodgy uh, hacker. And you'll receive the payload uh, tailored as you, uh, with the field you wanted, uh, exactly as you would expect. Um, once again, like we made the decision to not have GraphQL everywhere because it, it, it seems overkill, and I think implementing such an endpoint for the client would be very complex. Um, things that were not covered by uh, GraphQL, and I think that's a good point, are very specific to your um, domain, like authentication, um, that's something that is not specified, and that's a good point. We have tokens set as headers, and we just check, it, check them right away, and then we, we don't care about them in the resolution. And like the configura configuration for the, uh, this, the client application, like the URL for the endpoint or API keys, um, that's not part of GraphQL. That should be part of your client application registration process. Um, that makes it simpler. Uh, doing that, we noticed uh, that we really needed some tools that are missing. Um, everything related to managing a public API uh, is really hard uh, to, to have like rate limiting, uh, query death limiting, or any way to make sure that there is no abuse or performance issues. Um, and one tool that we use for the regular API, Apollo Engine, that gives us amazing insight about the performances, doesn't work with subscriptions. So we, we can't wait until they do. Um, yeah. And this is the current state of uh, GraphQL-based webhook at Slide. So basically, we've got working prototypes um, and integration. Uh, uh, they are not public yet because uh, of all the uh, public API-related issues we have, like making sure it works uh, and doesn't break our system. Uh, but it's a priority for the end of the year, so uh, you, we'll, we'll keep working on it and, and solve the is these issues. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of system, like you want to build a client or uh, implement your own uh, Webhook API, come to me because I have many questions still uh, unanswered and uh, feedbacks if you have some. Please come. Thank you.